Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about planets very similar to Earth, around stars very similar to the Sun, orbiting supermassive black holes. It's going to be a kind of a hypothetical investigation if such planets and such stars might exist around these massive giants. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now, generally speaking, I love discovering unusual papers that talk about black holes and specifically ultra massive black holes like this one right here. This astrophysical jet is created by the a very ultra massive black hole in the middle of M87 galaxy. I'm fairly certain most of you have seen this image already. This is the image of the black hole known as Powahi. And the astrophysical jet here is actually really, really long. So long as a matter of fact that you can technically see it if you have a powerful enough telescope. But one of the big questions is of course, if it's possible for planets to exist in these regions close to supermassive black holes. We've investigated several other papers that do discuss this in a lot of detail. Some even suggest that it's possible for planets to actually form themselves from all of the dust orbiting around black holes. But let's just say we want to discover an Earth-like world, a terrestrial planet around a star very similar to the Sun in the middle of this galaxy right here. In other words, if we were to take a look at Messier 87 or M87 as it's known, and if we were to zoom into the center, which I'm going to do uh, right now, and basically discover the ultra-massive black hole that's right there in the center. And by the way, this is several thousand times more massive than the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. So let's just say that we wanted to find out if it's possible for any terrestrial planet to exist in this system right here. And at least one study coming out of Italy that's still being published uh, and hasn't really been released officially yet is trying to investigate just that. And more specifically, the scientists behind this paper um, wanted to see if it's possible for a star that's kind of at this distance that you see right here to maintain a planet long enough for it to develop life. In other words, if a star orbits roughly around one parsec or 3.26 light years away from the black hole, and if that star has a terrestrial planet, would it be able to create life and maintain life for, let's just say, a billion years? So that's kind of what the scientists wanted to investigate, ignoring the fact that there's also a lot of other effects here that could destroy life, including gamma rays, including astrophysical jets, including a lot and a lot of supernova that will probably happen here pretty regularly. And we believe that most supermassive black holes definitely have a lot of stars orbiting close to them. Um, in this simulation you see that there is at least one G-type star very similar to our sun. And so if we have stars in this region, could we have planets? Now this is something we haven't really been able to answer, even though we've officially looked at and even created videos of what happens in the center of our own galaxy, you can actually see this is over a period of several years, and those objects are actual stars moving around the central black hole in the middle of Milky Way. We don't unfortunately see planets there, simply because all of this is just really far away. This is over 25,000 light years away from us, so seeing a planet here would be really challenging. And so to try to answer these questions, we can only do so by using mathematical modeling. And the scientist behind this paper did just that. He imagined a sun-like star, basically a star that's practically our sun, orbiting at 3.26 light years away from the black hole, which is right here where I am right now. And that particular star also had an Earth-like planet, which of course orbited in the same region where real Earth is. So all of this is purely mathematical, it's a theoretical model, and to analyze all of this, the scientists behind this paper ran this simulation for a few million years just to see what happens to that Earth around the star. And we can of course try to simulate this as well by using a tiny miniature model of the Sun, the Earth, and the ultra-massive black hole known as Puehi that all of this orbits around. And according to the simulation here, a single orbit around Poehi takes around 1000 years or so. A little bit more than that, close to about 1200 years actually. And that is of course a lot faster than what it takes for the Sun to orbit around the central black hole in the Milky Way. Our galaxy orbits around the Milky Way center once roughly around every 220 to 230 million years. That is a huge difference. So a galactic year in this system is really quick in comparison. 
And unfortunately, one of the discoveries in this paper is that a thousand years was more than enough for the planet to become really destabilized to essentially lose the terrestrial properties of Earth and to even sometimes make it collide with the star itself. In other words, in a lot of cases, the Earth ended up colliding with the Sun and disappearing entirely in some way or another. Which of course suggested that maintaining a stable terrestrial planet like Earth in the system would be very, very challenging. And even when that planet did not collide with the Sun or did not escape the system, the eccentricity of the planet changed enough for it to no longer be able to maintain stable conditions similar to Earth. In other words, the climatic conditions on Earth would start changing so much that it would just not be able to support life anymore. Right now, the orbital conditions of Earth are pretty stable, the eccentricity is extremely low, and our planet is able to maintain relatively similar conditions throughout the year. But in this simulation, in this particular paper, of Earth orbiting a sun-like star around a supermassive black hole, unfortunately it was not able to do any of this. The conditions here deteriorated pretty quickly, turning Earth into something that you see here. Either a snowball Earth, or basically the place where we would not be able to survive for a very long time. But in a lot of cases, the planet just disappeared completely by being swallowed by the star, or by being kicked out of the system. Oh, the one side note here is that the orbit that was chosen around the black hole is actually relatively close. This was about 3.26 light years away from the black hole, but a typical ultramassive black hole like Poehi is able to maintain orbits at a distance up to about a distance of about 300 to even 600 light years. So if the planet and the star were a lot farther from the black hole, the chance for having a stable orbit here would increase quite dramatically. But even though this is all kind of all hypothetical and I guess not really useful because we're not going to be going to these planets near black holes anytime soon, there is one thing that the author mentions that does come out of this study that is useful. And this is in regards to the changes in the axis of planets when they orbit objects like supermassive black holes. And more specifically, the scientists behind this paper suggest that by studying the changes in the axis of the planets, as a planet orbits around a star that orbits a massive black hole, we can kind of extrapolate all of these discoveries to then look at our own solar system. And analyzing the axis of spin in our own solar system we could find a way to trace the location of planet 9. In other words, because there were certain changes in the way that the planet was spinning over time due to the gravitational interactions, we could actually use these techniques to uh, analyze the planets in our own solar system and by using computer simulations try to find a way to trace where planet 9 might be. Because similarly to how the black hole was influencing the axis of that imaginary Earth, Planet 9 might be influencing the axial spin of various planets in our solar system. And so if we can find a way to extrapolate this data, we could technically trace where all of this gravitational interaction comes from. And so even though the study is kind of hypothetical, it has at least one practical application that we can apply to our own solar system. But I guess that's really it. That's all this study talks about. And if you'd like to learn more, check out the study in the description below. On that note, come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.